JFK. Tommy Lee Jones for JFK. And Dana Gould for JFK. And the fracky goes to... I'm so nervous. Dana Gould for JFK! Film from Oliver Stone, America's most controversial filmmaker. Ash not what your country can do for you. Ash what you can do for your country. John Fitzgerald Kennedy, 35th President of the United States. America must always move forward and meet the new challenges that arrive in the new frontier. In 1990, Oliver Stone took us inside the mind of Jim Morrison with The Doors. In 1991, he explodes the myth of JFK. If you don't want to sit through both films, they've now been combined into one incredible epic. All right, come on! Watch two men become one in Break On Through with JFK. All right! Meet the president. Oh, I'm the president. Let's have fun. The image. I don't know about the pants. They they don't go with the time. The man. You may be the president of the United States, but you are still the president of our world. But Jackie. Oh, oh. Pure Oliver Stone. All right, yeah. Oh, yeah. The history. Mr. President, we found Russian missiles in Cuba. <laughs> I am the Lizard King. A man in transition. Now on, you call me the Lizard King. All right, come on! It's a nickname, you know, like Bucky or Chip. A director's vision. They're riding in Alabama. Party politics. I mean, for God's sakes, Lyndon, you're the vice president. You can't carry your own state. I don't know what. John becomes Jim. Jim becomes John. I don't care what Castro or Khrushchev says. The position of the United States in this hemisphere as a world power remains un... Hello? Is there an I am stinky in here? Who gives this number out? Tangled passions of lust and power. Mr. President, Marilyn Monroe on line two. An epic adventure of the spirit. Hey, what's that old Indian doing there? He says he's needed for symbolism, Mr. President. Good enough. Oliver Stone brings you two idols for the price of one. Everybody in? Is everybody in? Celebration is about to begin. From Oliver Stone, break on through with JFK. It's not just the truth, it's better. Can it gives you through the media. Wow. Uh... I'd like to thank the Sunday Comics Academy of Arts and Sciences, and uh, actually, um, the CIA uh, helped me prepare a little speech. Um, it's just that uh, they'd like you to know that the work, uh, JFK, is a complete work of fiction. It has no bearing in reality, and I made it only as a fictitious work. And now that uh, I've said that, and I hope they're watching, and I'd uh, really like my dog back. You'll be shocked. You'll be surprised. Dare I say, aroused. When Hollywood's Christmas bards duke it out for a fracking. Welcome back to the first annual Fractured Film Award. Ladies and gentlemen, to read the rules, the president of the Sunday Comics Academy of Arts and Sciences, Mr. Gilbert Gottfried. Sure, they get a Jew to bring down the commandments. <laughs> anyway, the rules are as follows. Don't run with scissors in your hands. Don't tease your sister. Wait at least an hour after you've eaten to use the pool. And 
And uh, for the girls who come on stage with bathing suits, don't start like tugging in the middle. Don't like go like that. It's like it's not very attractive. And don't think you can do it with no hands and just like, you know, stand there like that. Because that doesn't work either. And the most important rule of the night, don't try to pick up a girl with a line, my doctor says it's a heat rash. <laughs> Thank you. Good night. Ladies and gentlemen, he's warm, he's pretty, and he sews his own clothes. Robert Schimmel. Thank you very much. On this bogus occasion, I'm overwhelmed with the measurable emotion. And speaking of measuring, it's my pleasure to introduce, tabulating the votes and protecting their confidentiality, the accounting firm of Keating, Boski, and Milken. <laughs> On to the next award. The nominees for Best Pushy Broad Film are Thelma and Louise, <laughs> Prince of Tides, Fried Green Tomatoes, and the Three Stoogettes Cafe Calamities. And the award goes to the Three Stoogettes for Cafe Calamities. Servant entrance is in the rear. Hey, keep your pants on, buddy. We're guests of this fine establishment. Yeah, we were three free meals at the church bazaar. Yeah, we were the most bizarre. <laughs> hey, <laughs> behave yourself. Walk this way, lady. Oh. Ooh. Hey. <laughs> Don't worry, lady. I'll kill that muskrat. <laughs> Follow me. I'll take that. Let's see what's on the menu. Oh, give me that. Some chowder for the chowder heads. Because I can't reach her. <laughs> mind your manners, mind your manners. Turn your head to the left and talk. 
Mr. Bruce Baum. The films that win our next award need guts. They need glamour. They need grit. They need to start with the letter G. That's why I'm so very pleased to present one of the most coveted of all awards. Best film beginning with the letter G. The nominees are Gandhi, <laughs> Ghostbusters, Grand Canyon, and Gagway. <laughs> and the award goes to Rich Scheidner in Gagway. In small towns across America, door-to-door -door salesmen have been around for a long time. And so have comedians. Now, men and women are hitting the streets and taking the jokes to the folk. Good afternoon, sir. My name is Rich Scheider from Gagway. Interest you in any laughter this afternoon? Nah, I had a good laugh yesterday. Well, I didn't. Well, you should have laughed when I did. Come on, get in. I don't laugh when I did. I'll you give did. you something to well, laugh about. Took a look. Hey, Jackie Cohn. How's it going, buddy? Tough neighborhood, pal. Hey, tell me about it. Get me out of this trunk! Maybe we can make some money, you nitwit! I'm the talent! Why am I in the trunk? Ventriloquist. <laughs> Hi, is your mom and dad home? <gasps> hey, look, it's a stand-up comedian! Come inside! Mom, come and look! Dad, look, it's a stand-up comic! He don't look funny. Can he make us laugh? Yeah, can we laugh? Well, honey, what do you think? All right. Oh, good. You yes. Rich Scheidner, stand-up comedian from Gagway. You are one of those prop comics, are you? You remember a couple years ago we had that guy in here and he was hitting fruit with a ball-peen hammer? We had to redo the whole living room. Oh, you don't have to worry about that from Gagway. There's our family budget joke plan. Our weekly special is flying, flying jokes. Well, we don't fly much. How about the 7-Eleven? Convenience stores, you like 7-Eleven jokes? Are all the 7-Eleven jokes based on the premise that the clerks are foreigners? Or they only shop there when you're drunk? Or that you pay like $300 for a quart of milk? How about television jokes? You like television? I'll give you five minutes of television jokes for $5. Come on, Dad. Hey, you better be funny. Yes. <laughs> well, ladies and gentlemen, our next comedian has worked neighborhoods and dental reception areas all over the tri-state area. Please welcome, in his neighborhood debut here, Rich Scheidner. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the living room. So, where are you from? Right here. Nice place you have. Hey, just get on with the jokes, pal. Just trying to warm up the crowd a little bit, Butch. So, you watch television? I love watching television. Wheel of Fortune. Here's a show. Easy question. Unbelievable. The game board will read A B blank L I N C O L N. And the guy will go, I need to buy a vowel, Pat. Hey, you need a brain, pal. Then Jeopardy, question's unbelievably tough. The answer is 14 pounds, and the guy knows Dad, the question. this guy's really bombing. What's the matter, kid? You didn't get enough oxygen when you are a fetus? Hey. Hey, this whole family started to look like outtakes from Deliverance. Or if I bought them. Hey, 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 hey. I hate playing families. I've always dreamed of winning a frack. Oh, my. Oh. That's my fracky. That's my fracky. Well, we got another. I want another fracky. But we'll have to order another fracky. Oh, no, I'm not, I'm not leaving here without a fracky. I come up here to get a fracky. Oh, my fracky. There's only so many for a fracky. Come on, I'm a fracky now. And now to present the award for Best Actress, won't you please welcome from Exit 42 on the Long Island Expressway, Carol Leaper's mother, Mrs. Leaper. The nominees for Best Actress are Meryl Streep for Kramer vs. Kramer. Didn't Florence's nephew's girlfriend know somebody with the name Kramer? Oh, no. Uh, Meryl Streep in Silkwood. Meryl Streep for the French Lieutenant's Woman. Not so hot. And Carol Leifer. Carol Leifer for Professional Temporary. I suppose they know what they're doing. And the winner is... Carol Darling! <laughs> <laughs> 
We won! We are flattened! Hello, Kimberly. It's Flo at the agency. I've got another temporary job for you. This time, you're to go to the Hillbrook Fashion Mall. And Kimberly, please don't be late. Hi. Uh, the regular ear piercing lady couldn't be here today, so they sent me. I'm Kimberly, and I'm a temporary. But don't worry or anything, because I read all the literature on the bus over. And in camp, I was really good at archery. Now, this won't hurt at all. Here we go. There's one and two. Oh, there, now that wasn't so bad, was it? Miss, weren't you supposed to numb her ears first? Oops. Almost there. <laughs> okay, that should be it. Okay, how does this feel? Pretty good? Oh, I'm sorry, what did you say? You know, it looks really good. It, it lo it's looking very good. Okay. Still not even. Now, they're even. Oh, uh, let me just uh, clean that up for you. Okay, they're all lined up. This should be really good. Oh, pardon me. Hello? Yeah, it's going great. Oh, no, it's excellent. It's really... Uh -huh. This is gonna look so pretty. I am really sorry. All I can say is, you like me. You really like me. Well, I'd like to thank everyone involved for getting me to this point in my career, but mostly, I'd like to thank my boyfriend for giving me the small one these last eight years. Thank you very much. We are building here, folks. Can you feel the electricity? Make the feel good award of the year. You'll laugh, you'll cry, you'll fight like a chicken. It's Factor Films Humanitarian Award. Now, he likes candlelit dinner, ceramics, and mud wrestling. From Married with Children, Mr. David Faustino. Thank you, thank you very much. I am honored tonight to be chosen to present a special award to the world's most famous funny man, Fritzy Anderson. What can I say about Fritzy? His name is synonymous with entertainment. And so, the ad hoc committee of the special branch of the Academy of Sunday Comics, Arts, and Sciences has voted to present Mr. Fritzy Anderson with the Ben Geisler Humanitarian Award. Long believed to be missing or dead, we're thrilled to tell you that Fritzy is alive and well. But, before we talk to him, let's look at a recent news show feature on the life of this consummate performer. The much-loved entertainer that many Americans knew simply as Fritzy has disappeared and is believed dead after the small fishing boat he had chartered early yesterday was found off the coast badly damaged. The once celebrated comedian grew to popularity in the 50s, but fell from the limelight in recent years. Five years ago, Anderson stopped touring and opened his own club in West Los Angeles, where he was often known to make an appearance. What do you call an Irish but who's been out all night? Patio furniture. Oh, thank you. You people are like family to me. You remind me of my Uncle Phil. He's dead too. Hello? He's this day gone. Oh. Fritzy started his career early on at the age of 13. What a treat this is to be here at Joey's Bar Mitzvah. Mostly because I wasn't invited. Oh. But folks, take a look at this joint. That's the Hillcrest Country Club. They had a Drive last week, drove off 35 people. Oh. Hello? Is this thing on here? In the late 60s came the charges of alleged dealings with the mafia. Mr. Anderson, what about all this evidence that substantiates your ties to the mob? The mob ties? Mob ties? The only ties I got 
a neckties. Oh, ah! Come on, we gotta this get. thing on. And so all America will mourn the loss of a true national treasure. A piece of history named Fritzy Anderson. Wherever he is, we're sure he's getting a laugh. Hey, fellas, if the jokes get any funny here, there's gonna be a two coconut minimum. <laughs> is this on? Is this thing on? Oh, ah, oh. What are you guys, headhunters? Where we come from, they call them mother-in-laws. You get it? I'm killing it. Yeah, take two pills and come back Tuesday, Chaba. Ooh, ah, ooh. And now, live via satellite from his office on the East Coast, Mr. Fritzy Anderson. Fritzy? Is this thing on? This is quite an honor. Ooh. Speaking of honors, Frank Sinatra once saved my life. Two guys have beat me up. He said, that's enough, fellas. Oh, oh, you get it? Come on, folks. Why did the Siamese twins move to England to give the other one a chance to drive? Hello? Is the sound system working in this so-called steam bath? What do you call a dog with no legs? Nothing. No matter what you call him, he ain't coming. Oh, ah, ooh, ooh. I love you. You're beautiful. You're lower than worm sperm. You're paramecium nipples. You're pond scum. Why do I say these things, folks? Because I kid. And the kidding doesn't come from here, or here, nor here, nor even inside of here, but from here, this general throbbing, pulsating area of my chest called the heart, because I love you people, because my message is love. Shut that door! And I'd like to thank the people of the Academy making this possible, that I could uh, receive such an esteemed, get it, award. Reminds me of a story. Two guys going. Put your right foot in, take your right foot out, put your left foot in, and shake it all about. Mr. Rich Hall. Thank you very much. Our blue ribbon panel of experts has chosen the following five nominees in the category of best documentary. The staple remover, America's touchstone of office supplies. Shecky, the forgotten Kennedy. Potatoes are stovetop behind the Trump divorce. And what do you do? A closer look at insurance fraud. The winner is Susan Lucci. Ha, just kidding. Okay, the award goes to Kevin Meaney and Ken Rogerson for What Do You Do? Hi, I'm Kevin Meaney. And welcome to a new segment on Sunday Comics called What Do You Do? A segment where we meet people who do unusual things for a living. Today we're in Hollywood, and we're going to meet a guy named Joe. He's asked me not to give his full name because of the nature of his work. Welcome, Joe. Hey, I uh, appreciate the opportunity. <laughs> so tell us, Joe, what do you do? Well, basically, to put it in layman's terms, I throw myself in front of cars, and I collect the, either the insurance money or whatever the driver can spare. So you can collect from an insurance company? Actually, I've never tried. I don't like to go down there. You know, they ask too many questions. I say go right to the consumer. Joe, let me ask you, how did you get started? Oh, hold on, here comes a go. Joe, are you all right? Oh, yeah, that comes with the territory. Oh, no, that one was uh, moving a little quicker than I would have liked. Do me a favor and just pull that shoulder back down. <laughs> Joe, I, uh, I couldn't help but notice you didn't collect any money. Well, they don't always stop. So it's a volume thing. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Let me get back to the original question. Yeah. When did you get started? Well, when I was a boy, my dog got hit by a car, and uh, the driver felt too bad to give me a dollar. So I'm thinking, hey, there's money in this. The day after that, I take my dead dog up the main street, and I throw him in front of cars. And you made money? Oh, for a while. I mean, it's a small town. People catch on. But then it hits me. If they'll pay money because they hit a dog, how much will they pay because they hit a human? You know? Oh, here comes a big one. <laughs> You're a thinker, Joe. <laughs> so what do you say? A little something for the femur? Hey, I'm just a driver. No, oh, is that a good one? 200 bucks. Seems like it will cost 200 bucks to have your legs set. Oh, yeah, medical expenses really cut into my profits, and, boy, try to get insurance if you're me. 
Let me ask you, yeah, what's the biggest vehicle you've ever been hit by? Uh, I got hit by a trailer truck one time. I was, I was actually aiming for a, for a BMW, and I, I missed, and a truck really took me off my feet. It's all timing, isn't it? Oh, uh, yeah, and the thing was, I got my lip caught in that bulldog horn ornament, and it took me all the way to Reno before the driver even knew I was there. <laughs> Dude, is that a tough way to make a living? That's uh, steady work. Oh, hold on. That's a hell of a way to make a living. I'm Kevin Meany. See you real soon on What Do You Do? Oh. Oh. We'll be rich off of this one. Oh, thank you so, so much. Uh, I guess we'd like to thank the Academy. And Tiffany Bambi, go to bed now. Daddy will be home real soon. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. A series of awards for technical achievement were given at a gala dinner last night, and here are some of those technical achievers. Ladies and gentlemen in the audience, watch your monitors for the technical awards. Here they are. I, I guess we're having some uh, technical problems with that uh, tape. All right, let's, uh, let's move on to the next award. The nominees for Best Out-of-State Film are My Own Private Idaho, Mississippi Burning, Escape from New York, and Robert Schimmel in Alaska. The award goes to Robert Schimmel in Alaska, ladies and gentlemen. Kodiak Island, Alaska. July 6th. Dear Jim, when you became my agent, you warned me that being a comedian was going to be tough and that sometimes I might have to take it on the chin. But you promised you'd make me a star if I learned to roll with the punches. You wouldn't believe how I felt seeing my name on the marquee up here. All these years on the road and I still had chills up and down my spine. You know, I remember you telling me that this place wasn't actually a comedy club per se but that all the heavyweights have played here. And you were right. In fact, I work with one of the biggest ever. Jim, I had the crowd roaring from the moment they first saw me. One guy was so anxious for the show to start, the MC had to practically hold him back. was perfect. I wasn't even distracted by a heckler in the crowd. There was so much energy in the room, my head was reeling. I guess it helps when the club owner is in your corner. I might not be a star yet, but I'm sure no one ever got as many laughs as I did that night. I can still hear the loud buzzing sound of the audience. I improvised as many gags as I could, and then suddenly it was all over. I honestly can't even remember which gag I closed with, but I do know I've never worked harder for any audience, and boy did they appreciate it. They showered me with affection and carried me all the way to my dressing room just as if I was the winning quarterback in the Super Bowl. And I know every time I look in the mirror, I'll think of you and how you sent me here. I guess I'm lucky. Other comics have agents who only worry about getting their commission checks. Well, you don't have to worry about that, Jim. Because I'm going to see to it personally that you get everything that's coming to you just as soon as I get back. Robert Schimmel. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'd like to especially thank my agent for this. Thank you. Coming up next, the most cherished award of all. I know I've said that before, but this time I really mean it. And if you're really good, I scream. Hands inside your car. It's Dana Gould. Thank you. Thanks. It's uh, 
It's really groovy to be here, man. <laughs> you don't need glasses to see that I'm having a good time. Okay. Uh, tonight, the nominees for Best Choreographed Film are Flashdance, Dirty Dancing, Dances with Wolves, and Dirty Dances with Wolves. And the cracky goes to... <laughs> Dirty Dances with Wolves! He journeyed across the land with a sublime fascination. Yearning to see a wild frontier before it was tamed. A man who searched for truth, for love, for adventure. But what he found was much more, for he found a spirit a faith, a new way of life. And although one quest had just ended, another was about to begin. I've played this game before. You were very good. Why, thank you. And you are? Crybaby. Crybaby? It means innocent, but cranky youth. I, I'm lieutenant. It means fifth man down on the ladder. She opened her heart and home to the stranger in a strange land. She taught him to survive among the elements. And how to make really neat arts and crafts. And although it was his responsibility to establish an outpost, a wolf kept following him. Even though he didn't have the proper shoes, still, he found himself dirty dancing with wolves. <laughs> Coming this holiday season to a theater near you, Dirty Dances with Wolves. Ladies and gentlemen, winning this fracky. was weird. Uh, finally, tonight is the award that you've all been waiting for. This is tonight's most shining moment. The nominees for Best Work with a Cow, Never Convicted. <laughs> tonight they are Billy Crystal for his work with Norman in City Slickers, Vivian Lee for her work with the straggling heifer in Gone with the Wind, Bruce Baum for his work with Dimples in Rustlers, and Richard Burton for his work with Elizabeth Taylor in Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf? 
And the one's here. And the winner, <laughs> well, what do you know? It's uh, Bruce Baum again. Dimples, you're going to be able to fix this? We haven't got all day. <laughs> a wrench? We interrupt this program for a special news burst. Be on the lookout for the Ravello Gang, a band of dangerous cattle rustlers. There's a cow and her pal Bruce. He really listens when she really moves. It's Dimples, a cow and Bruce. Wow, cattle rustlers. <laughs> hey, that's a great idea. We'll hide in our own herd, and when the rustlers come, we'll, uh... What do we do? <laughs> of course, we'll cross that bridge when we come to it. Here they are, my friends. This will be like taking candy from someone. Dimples, look around. Do you see anything? Look! A smart cow! <laughs> Get her! Have you got them? I guess them. Good enough. Vamos, arriba. Oh, oh, Dimples, follow my sand. Oh, you need a wine of that, huh? Hey, give me that. Oh, what's the matter, baby? <laughs> Dimples. It's that smart cow. You do not scare me, la vaca. Everybody, enjoy yourself. <laughs> Come over here, baby, huh? Come the next... La vaca, get your stinking head off of my shoulder. Oh, you are thirsty, la vaca? Have a drink. <laughs> you okay, boss? Get it, boy. Jump, Dimple! Jump! <laughs> Way to go, girl! Now, come on, uh, untie me. Yeah, come on, we'll go home. That's it. Oh, are you untie me? Oh, you. You did it again. Dimple's the cow and... <laughs> Unfortunately, we've uh, we've run out of awards. But uh, well, instead we have dinner for two at Cola Maria's right here in uh, Encino, right in the valley. You, uh, you like Italian food? Yes, I do. But there's five of us. There's. Uh, can we make it for five, Freddie? Can we? Uh, yeah, we'll make it for five. All right, thanks. All right, we can all go now. There's something really great coming up. I wish I could tell you what. Let's just say, scantily clad women are still in the building. They say... Well, it looks like we've run out of time. So thank you very much for coming. We'll see you next year. Uh, try the veal.